This video was brought to you by Indently.io, learning Python made simple. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can create a simple decorator in Python. But first, let's get started with the imports. So to begin, I'm going to import from typing the callable type, which I like to use with any function or any object that is callable. Then from func tools, we're also going to import something called wraps. And this is a very important piece of functionality that we should always use when creating decorators. And I'll show you why quite soon. Then finally, we're going to import from time the performance counter and the sleep method. So here we have the imports. Next, let's create our very first decorator. And the goal of this decorator is to time any snippet of code or any function that we use this decorator on. So to get started, we'll create a function called get time. And that's going to take the function, which is going to be of type callable, that we want to time. And that's going to return to us a callable. Then inside here, we need to use the at wraps decorator and wrap the original function, the one that we want to time. And this decorator is going to be used on the wrapper. You can name this whatever you want, but conventionally, this is called wrapper because this is what we are wrapping. And this will take the arguments and the keyword arguments from the original function. So whatever you pass into your original function will get passed on to the wrapper. And this will return none in this context because we are only executing code here. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the goal of this decorator is to time code. So the first variable we will create inside here is the start time variable, which will be of type float. And that's just going to get the current time. Then we want to call our function so we can actually see how long it takes to execute with the args and the keyword arguments. And finally, we're going to want to grab that end time. And that will also be of type float and will equal that performance counter. So it will grab the current time once again. Then all we have to do is print that the function dunder name took this amount of time to execute. And to calculate how long it took to execute, we just need to subtract the end time from the start time. And using some f string magic, we can use a double colon here and type in dot three f. And that will format it to three decimal places. So we don't get a huge decimal when we are subtracting the start time from the end time. And at the end, I like to add S just to show that this is in seconds. Anyway, when you are creating a decorator, this is where you would insert your functionality inside the wrapper. And all that's left for us to do is to return this wrapper without the parentheses. We're just going to return it bare because we're not calling it here. We're calling it as soon as we apply the decorator to the function that we specify. So next, let's create some sort of hypothetical function that we can use this on. And in this example, I'm going to copy and paste in a function called calculate. And this isn't anything special. It's just me bloating a function with a lot of random code because all we're doing here is calculating the sum of a plus b. But we are simulating that it takes much longer than that because in a real world project, this could be a completely different calculation that takes much longer. But due to lack of creativity, I'm just calling the sleep function to simulate that this takes two seconds to calculate. And then it will print the result of a plus b, which is a plus b. So just to show you how that works, we're going to calculate one plus two. So now let's run this. And as you can see, it's calculating one plus two. And as soon as two seconds have elapsed, it will give us the result, which is three. Thank God we have programs for this. But now let's use our decorator on this function. And to apply it, all we need to do is use the at symbol followed by get time. And this will apply the decorator to our function. So calculate is going to be passed in as the function to our decorator here. So instead of function, just pretend it says calculate now, which means that once we calculate it with A and B, the arguments or the keyword arguments are going to be A and B. So we're just calling it here with those arguments so that the next time we actually run this, it's going to give us back the total time that it took to run. But there's one last thing that we have to cover because earlier I told you that it's incredibly important that we use the at wraps decorator when we are creating a decorator. And it's not something that's completely obvious when you start creating your very first decorators. But to demonstrate what this does, I'm going to create some doc strings. And the first doc string is going to be placed inside the wrapper. And we're just going to call this wrapper underscore underscore doc. Then we're going to copy this and paste it also inside the calculate function. So both of these are going to have doc strings. And finally, we're going to go to the bottom of our script and print two things. The first one being the calculate 
dot thunder method name method and the second one being the doc which is going to give us the doc string. So this is just some very basic information regarding our function. Right now, if we were to run this, you'll see that everything works just fine. When we call the name and the doc string thunder methods on our calculate function, it gives us back exactly what we asked for. And that's because we wrapped the correct function. But if we were to exclude this and rerun our script, you'll notice that we're going to get the details back for the wrapper because the wrapper is what's being executed, not our function. Or actually, our function is being executed inside the wrapper, but when we're asking Python to give us back this information, all it has is the information of the wrapper, which is quite misleading. It might not be the biggest bug in the world, but someday, if you ever have to use any of these methods or have to refer to anything that has to do with the name or the doc string, you're not going to get the information that you expected back. So that's why it's important to include this decorator. But yeah, that's how you create a simple decorator in Python. It doesn't have to be a timing function. It can be literally anything you want it to be. And it's not exactly vital to programming in Python, but it can be very convenient when you learn how to use it properly.